Hey guys, after a longer than expected and choppy passage, we arrive in Samana, Dominican Republic and check out some of the must-see places for super cheap. Perfect for us travelers on a budget. I'm Stephanie and this is Travis. Together we bought a 142 passage that we call Gypsy. We sold almost everything that we owned and moved aboard. After living on Gypsy through a Toronto winter, we decided that we had to get down south. Though we've got very little sailing experience, we decided to leave it all behind in our home country, Canada, to live out our dream in sailing the world. We're so pumped to share this adventure of a lifetime. It's 4 a.m. and we're leaving Loop Ron, 25 nautical miles from here to get to Sosua. Five hours, maybe six. Been in Loop Ron for two weeks, so I'm ready for something new. And this is our weather window, so. Gotta take it. You ready to go? <laughs> you kind of travel the DR coast in the early mornings or late at night because all the wind just dies down. So instead of beating into the trades, you go uh, at night or early in the morning. According to the Thornless Path, uh, the Gentleman's Guide South. So we'll put that to the test today because our weather window, we got a good three day weather window um, to get us to Semina. But we only do 25 nautical miles today, and then we're gonna do a big one tomorrow, and then a small one the next day. Let's get out of here. Originally, our plan was to go from Loop Run and then anchor in Sosua, and then from Sosua to El Valle, anchor there, and then El Valle to Semana. Our friends that were a little ahead of us anchored in Sosua told us that the anchorage was so rocky that it was worse than what it was like in Matthew Town. And if you guys recall, Matthew Town was the shittiest anchorage, so we were definitely not going there if it was that bad. That was quick. I'm glad that wasn't a net. It was like a series of bottles, and at each bottle had a fishing line with something attached to it. But there was like, I don't know, 20 freaking bottles, and they're all attached to with a rope. And we went right over it. So, like, all of a sudden you watched all the bottles just like go behind the boat. morning so we couldn't go all night we were just way too white we didn't expect to do Lupron to Samana we were only gonna do five hours and a little jumps throughout the night but there was a big northerly swell component so each anchor we went to was just like garbage to stay at we went to about 12 o'clock at night and we just said we got to pull in so we pulled into L El Valle, which is like gorgeous anchorage. Try to stand still. This is the boat. This was not fun to sleep in. Here we only knew we were going to stop for about six hours, so if we had a little roly poly, it was okay. We should have another good window to, to round the Cape. Uh, I don't remember what the Cape's called, but making some coffee and gonna pull a banker. Wow. We're 
approaching Samana Bay and there are whales in front of us, so hopefully we get to see them. This is a good day as any to start the rebuilding of life. The roads that lay open are many. When the old one's gone under the knife, and I can feel the sun on my skin beginning to thaw from within. We finally made it to Seminar. When we dropped anchor, it was pretty straightforward. We had Luis, the harbor master, and one of the Armada officials come to our boat. They boarded our boat for about five minutes and completed some paperwork with us. They took our despacho that we got from Lupron, and they told us that once we leave Semana, we'll give us a new one. Five minutes and the paperwork was done and Luis was like, well, you know, if you want to give the Armada official here like a tip, he's done his job now here. You can give them a tip if you want. So we just gave them like a little bottle of rum that we had picked up in Lupron. They did ask for a photocopy of our passports. We only had like a laminated photocopy of our passports for ourselves as a backup. There were a few other boats that arrived in the harbor around the same time as us. So Luis was gonna check each of them in. And then once he was done, he was gonna pick up all the captains from each of the boats and then bring them all to town to the Port Authority to do the rest of the paperwork and get the photocopies. So not a big deal. The expectations and what the protocol was, was explained to us pretty clearly. So that was good. So this is where we come check in to Samana for the Port Authority and you gotta pay 75 cents a foot to anchor in the bay. Seminaw is the capital of Seminaw province and is located on the northern coast of Seminaw Bay. It's a main center for whale watching tours in the Caribbean. From January to March, there's a boost in economy here with the annual migration of thousands of North Atlantic humpback whales that come to Seminaw Bay to give birth. So Seminaw is the center of the country's tourism during these months. Being at the tail end of the season, we're lucky that we still got to see them. The locals here are more persistent than in Lupron or Porta Plata in trying to sell you things. One gentleman started following us throughout our exploration of the town and acted sort of like a tour guide on his own accord. The public market is a great spot to pick up fresh local produce, meat, and fish. That guy followed us every single store and then came into the restaurant with us. We told him at the beginning, look, no tip, we're okay, but thank you. But you're a good man, you're a good man. He tried to shake down the restaurant for 10% of our bill. Like, he brought us to the restaurant that we chose. And then the restaurant owners were like, no, get out at that point. They're just like, they get it that they're going to approach you for money and try to make money, but not for four hours straight. Like, we told them, like, you don't tag along for four hours literally side by side. That was a little much. He was so close. Like, he was in my arm swing proximity. I was walking, and then I hit him because he was, like, right there. Why not? rented a truck and drove to El, Mion, El Limon waterfalls and there's gonna be a bunch of people that try to stop you on the way in to tell you you gotta uh, yeah they try to stop you like hardcore try to stop you and try to get you to, get to rent horse. camels and horses to get up there but apparently camel. or something <laughs> a horse or a donkey a camel oh yeah <laughs> no camels <laughs> maybe if Sally had no humps <laughs> um, but what you do is you just follow it all the way to the end. There's a road you'll turn off on the maps. Go all the way to the end, it's 100 pesos to park. And then it's... 50 pesos a person for an entrance 50 pesos a person to uh, hike in. And we read that on online, it's a true thing. These, they're not trying to just take 50 pesos well, from you. Well, we read it on TripAdvisor, somebody had written that. Yeah. So unless if it's an ongoing thing, whatever. 
It's really hard to tell sometimes what's legit or not. Everyone here asks you for money, and a lot of people will tell you they almost feel harassed with the extent of it. Didn't opt to get the horses to take us through the hike, so we're walking. And that means dodging a bunch of horse poop along the trail. Lots of it. Gotta be careful. El Limon Waterfall is 52 meters high and sits in lush tropical greenery. It's a very popular tourist attraction, and from what we saw, almost every other tourist that did the hike by horse, mule, or by foot had a tour guide. The way we came in was less busy, and we were able to walk the trail on our own, guide-free, and on our own time, which was nice. And honestly, it may be better for people to just hike the two-kilometer trail if they're able, because the horses look skinny, malnourished, and the trail is quite rocky, which doesn't look easy on the horses either, while the tour guides whip them. up at the second level there was a small waterfall and we made it to the big waterfall and it is beautiful the locals showed us where it was safe to jump so of course Travis is gonna try he's crazy Is it alive? Is it alive? It's dead, right? It may have been a six hour trip by boat, but since it's only an 18 minute drive from Samana, we're checking out the Roly Anchorage we didn't get to explore. El Valle is really quite pretty with a nice sandy beach and definitely worth dropping the hook for, if the seas allow. just got to this national park on the other side of Samana. Uh, the name of it, Steph, she said something. Steph, just insert your, we got a four day pass to anchor here because it's a national park, so you can't just come over. And the crazy DR dispatcho check-in routine. You know, they always want to know where you're at. A lot of caves, so let's go check it out. right now it might be free because it's kind of later on in the day otherwise it's 100 pesos per person and you also need a flashlight spooky the caves in the national park are filled with petroglyphs and pictographs that predate the Taino culture which is back in the 15th century Petroglyphs are images carved or scratched into stone, and pictographs are paintings on a stone using natural pigments. There have been over a thousand paintings spotted in the park so far. 
The park is known for sighting the highest number of them in the country. Archaeologists are still unsure of exactly who drew them, but artifacts dating back as far as the pre-ceramic era have been found in some of the caves. It's estimated that people have been inhabiting the caves for a period of 3,000 years, many of which haven't been excavated yet because they're almost impossible to reach. I went to the center of the earth and back. It's a lot to see down there. <laughs> Did you miss me? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The park is also popular for its mangroves, tropical rainforests, and for bird sightings. Today, we're going to experience resort life for a day. The entry is only $5 per person and is a steal once you see the place. We're visiting Parezo Caño Hondo, which is located within the Los Aitises National Park. The National Park Los Aitises Aitises, I can't pronounce it, was established in 1976 and it's on the northeast coast of the Dominican Republic. And in Taino language, it translates to hilly land. Since the year 2000, it seems like it's been a pretty popular destination for people looking for an ecological or like a more green vacation. And it's been ranked by Forbes magazine as one of the top 10 destinations for green vacation. Parezo Cano Hondo is absolutely beautiful, woodsy and rustic with 28 guest rooms. It's really cool. All their lights are made with used bottles. Just gonna climb up a little bit higher and get a better view. Let's see if we can get a peek into a room. You really feel like you're just like in nature. So many good spots to just hang out. Yeah, a lot of little nooks and crannies with views. You hear the birds, the leaves. Lovely. The lobby, I think. The restaurant in here. Altos de Caño Hondo is the secondary guest lodging area that sits higher in elevation and has 16 guest rooms. One of our favorite parts are the natural pools that flow from the Havalis River. There are a total of 12 natural freshwater swimming pools with waterfalls throughout the resort. Great for whether you're looking to cool off, jump in and be a little silly, relax, or have some fun in the water. We left pretty early this morning from the park to head back to Samana. I usually want to leave pretty early in the morning because before the winds pipe up. We left at like 5 o'clock this morning. It's only a two hour uh, sail. 
not bad, but we tried to leave yesterday and they were like five to seven foot, very short, steep waves. So we left earlier this morning and uh, it's a little bit smoother. Usually they're a lot calmer than this, but the last two days the wind's been blowing up to 26 knots offshore, east to northeast. So all that wind just comes straight down the bay here. We're heading to the marina, just around the corner from Salmon Eye to fuel up before we head on uh, the Mona Passage. It's been a while since we had the time for the dock, eh? Before leaving Samana, our last stop is this little hidden gem at the top of the hill. Free infinity pool, anyone? We found this rooftop pool, which was the perfect place to hang out for sunset. Situated outside of the main tourist area and a bit of a trek up the hill, the view was totally worth checking out. We're testing the safety out in the DR. Yeah, we found a shortcut through the dump. Past the landfill. Yep. Yeah. And I don't think there's any tourists here. No, we are definitely the only gringos walking around here. Upon returning to Samana, we have to check out of the port here before we can leave to our next destination. Like Loop Run, the checkout process with the Armada to obtain our despacho takes forever. So while Travis is at the Armada requesting our despacho, I'm heading to Immigrations. Since we're not only checking out of the port and we'll be checking out of the country, we're getting our passport stamped. Three hours later, our uh, Armada is taking us to our boat. We just finished immigration. It was a little bit of a confusing process. We went to the Armada and they told us that immigration was closed until Monday and it's Good Friday today. So when we walked here, they got her open. We got our passport stamped, we got our despachos, and we're good to go. With our despacho, we're leaving Samana Bay and we'll be staging for our crossing of the Mona Passage, three nautical miles away at Cayo Leventado. We had a great change of pace here in the Dominican Republic and hope you enjoyed sharing the adventures we had here. Whether we've given you some ideas for places to check out if you're planning on visiting or whether it's brought back fond memories of a previous trip. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned as we cross the Mona Passage to Puerto Rico.